Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your December 2024 uh, numerology and tarot forecast with me, Raphael. I am uh, so, so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for being a part of my channel. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I am Raphael from Radiant Reality. I am an astrologer, tarot reader, numerologist and energy worker. Those are my core four. That is my bag. Uh, a lot of people know me through the numerology videos that I put out on YouTube. This is how I come to the conclusions that I use. I use uh, all of the usual numerology, but I also use some ancient techniques and some Chaldean numerology as well. Uh, with that said, uh, if I'm ever talking about astrology, which I won't be here, I'm talking about whole sign tropical Western astrology. Thank you so much for being here. For those of you that are continued subbies, you know Raffi loves you. And if you want some of that Raffi love, hit that subscribe button. With that said, let's uh, get into it. So December can you believe it is the end of the year already? Like, I really feel like we blinked this year. And I know I say that every year, right? And it seems like things just speed up. Um, but this year, I am sort of amazed at how monumentally fast this year seems to have just flown by. I feel like I've lived like a thousand lifetimes in this one year alone. So with that said, let's get straight into it. This month is really all about connections, right? Partnerships, collaborations, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in relationships as we understand it, right? This could be personal relationships, professional, platonic, uh, familial even. Uh, and it's in truth, it's been said that our connections, it's really our connections that make us stronger. And it has also been said that our net work is also our net worth, meaning who you surround yourself with matters. It really matters. Who you buddy up with, who you partner up with, the wrong or the right partner, uh, friends, family, colleagues can literally make or break your life. And if you don't know that already, get your head out of the sand and get your head into the game, right? Real talk. The people that you surround yourself with, the connections that you forge, the people that you spend time with on a day-to-day -day basis all the time really can make or break the life that you have and also the life that you want. As it is, uh, as such, should I say, it's a really important time for you to be honest about the connections in your life, uh, what they mean for you, right? Are they feeding you on a soul level or are they feeding on you at an energetic level? Really, really important thing to ask yourself this this uh, at this time in, you know, not just in the year, but in the, this time in your life and in history. That's going to be really a lot more evident as the month sort of, you know, develops over the course of this, uh, what's left of this year. It's the holiday season, right? As we begin this month, Mars is already slowing right down to go, you know, to stand still and then go retrograde at the very start of the month. Like by the time we get to like the 7th of December, Mars goes retrograde. We are all going to feel this one because it starts in Leo. It's going to reverse back into the sign of Cancer and it won't be done with all of this until well into 2025. Mars doesn't actually leave Cancer and track forward out of those beginning six degrees of Leo, which is where it goes retrograde, until well into like June of 2025. This is a huge, huge deal, right? It doesn't even go direct until the 24th of February, okay? So big, big deal. If you haven't seen it yet, uh, check out all of the retrograde videos that I've done make sure you check that out. Uh, that being said, the 2025 goodies are on their way. So as I'm putting this out, it's the 20th. So give or take a couple of days, you're going to start to see all of the life path stuff coming out, all of the uh, 2025 Astro Tarot stuff. And you're also going to see my much loved and highly anticipated every single year. You guys do it every single year. I don't know how, but every single year that I put out that universal numerology overview video, the view count just gets higher and higher. And I love you guys for that. And I'm so, so very, very grateful. This year, it's even longer. It's like my longest one yet. We're talking like an hour and 15 minutes. It's a big one. I did throw literally everything but the kitchen sink at this one. 
uh, you get in the numerology of the year. I touch on the astrology. I talk about the tarot. I get into the mysticism of the number nine, uh, the esoteric value and quality, as if that wasn't enough. There's historical references, as if that wasn't enough. I even talk about predictions for the year ahead. Trust me, it's a long video, so you're going to want a nice brew. Get a cup of something warm, hot and cosy. Get yourself a pad and a pen. And when you've got time to really sit and digest it, because there's a lot of information in that video. That being said, this month's energy of December 2024, we're working with the number two. Two has a natural insecurity to it. Right. And this is not in the negative sense. It has a natural insecurity to it because just like Neo in the Matrix, it's an equation. It's the equation trying to balance itself out. What do I mean by that? Two energy is ruled by the moon. It's naturally more sensitive and it's more attuned to what is kind of out of place or what needs to be corrected or righted in some way. So when you if you've seen the Matrix trilogy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Neo is one part of a whole of an equation that's trying to balance itself out. Two energy is always looking for what is out of sync, for what is out of step so that it can balance that energy out. Therefore, the number two and the characteristics of that two energy are it's more chilled, it's more sensitive, it's more connective, it has an insecurity about it. And I don't mean that in the negative way that that uh, word is perceived. I mean, two is a natural energy of questioning because it's always trying to think about how to balance out to see if something is fair. Is everyone getting something out of what is being considered at this moment in time? Is it fair for all involved? Is it too much of this, right? Is it too much of that? It, you know, what does it need not to be out of balance? The sensitive number two is ruled by Luna, her psychic, intuitive and nurturing energies. Uh, and as the astro mage mama herself, Caitlin Copper, tip my hat to you, tells us, Luna's primary concern is that we her children, all of us in the sublunar realm, right, underneath the lunar realm, are well fed, catered for and looked after. This is an important, uh, you know, these are really things that are really important to our fair celestial mama. Now, as such, we all will take on a more nurturing, more connective, uh, more sort of mothering, smothering, paternal kind of energy as well. Uh, funny how the word mothering and smothering is, you know, the, just add an S, right? Add an S or take an S away. A clue there, perhaps. Uh, now, all of this aside, this is a month for diplomacy, belief and, uh, you know, maybe even political adjustments will likely come up over the course of this month as well. Enjoy your holidays. Do not let that stuff ruin this for you, right? Whatever pockets of goodness you can find, don't allow the outside world, especially those things that are wrought to tear things and people apart. Uh, don't let those things encroach on your time that is actually about connection. This is a time for collecting, gathering, whatever it might be, to see us through not only this month, but also the potentially hard winter months that lie ahead. It really is a great time for coming to agreements and negotiations, burying hatchets, or as I like to say, get the fuck over it, <laughs> right? We all know that life is too short, but by this time, I think we can all really very well, like be very well aware that actually it's not just life that is short, right? And it's also, it's not life, yeah, it's not just that life is short, but it's also not worth our peace, okay? Any and all relationships that do not foster support, uh, that do not promote peace in your life, uh, will seem like a discordant note in a song, right? And you'll notice it because it's a two month. We're going to be that much more sensitive to whatever or whoever is just really fucking jarring to us. Like, you know, when you, you, you meet somebody like, and let's say nine times out of 10, you can absolutely handle someone and you're just like, you know what, that's who they are. It is what it is. But then one day you kind of look at that person and you think, wow, you're actually really quite caustic and abrasive. And I actually don't want to be around you. 
this might be one of those months and it may be people that you really don't expect it to be. You might have some moments where you're like, holy crap, I actually really don't like your presence at this moment in time. And therefore, moving forward with so much retrograde energy, you're seeing things and people very differently to how you move forward, right? So then you're going to decide, you're going to start to think about what you're going to do with this. Even though we've got Mercury retrograde, Mars retrograde, and Jupiter retrograde by the time we get to, well, Mercury goes direct on the 16th of the month, but certainly for that first, from the 7th to like the 15th, there will be three planetary retrogrades in the sky. And even though it's said that things that break up in a, in a retrograde don't tend to stay that way, there is a finality about the endings in two relationships at this moment in time, because Mars is in, um, you know, well, it will be retrograde in the sign of Leo, but then it will come back into the Cancerian side, which is about the, ha the home and the hearth. That will happen January 6th. I'll be here to talk about that at that moment in time. Um, watch for family dynamics, though, because even though that doesn't happen until January 6th, Mars coming back into the sign of Cancer, I still think that it will be a, a thread or a theme that we can feel in the background, especially because this is a two month, right? On a microcosmic level, we're going to need to make some really deep decisions at this time about what we are really ready to commit to or not, as the case might be. Uh, we might see our own, like we might see where our own ideas or nature is unyielding and maybe the source of some of, if not all of our own problems. It's a time to get really honest, right? If the thing that is outside of or out of whack or out of balance or is the discordant note in the, in the song is yourself, this is a time to be really honest with yourself about that. This is a time to initiate conversations that require deep and meaningful communication, even with the retrogrades going on. Why? Because you're going to be seeing yourself and your connections that much clearer. And, you know, Nadia Shah, a lot of really good astrologers actually talk about the energy of a planet being retrograde is where that energy goes inward that much more. So this is a time to really understand wh where your own BS shows up, right? Um, I also like the fact that this could be a time of emotional deliverance through real honesty. Two energy is about checking the integrity of the systems that we've got in place in order to make something work or to make something happen. And as that's the case, what do we need more of or what do we need less of? What do our future plans require? And, you know, who do we, who or what do we know uh, will we'll have that work, right? We'll stand with it. Um, don't forget the yearly personal year ahead readings will be coming very, very soon. Stay tuned for those because as usual, there's only 20 spaces. Last year, they sold out in like, I think it was like four hours. They were all gone. Uh, and I only release these spots once a year at this moment in time. So if you want yours, stay tuned because they will be coming. And if you want one of those personal year ahead readings, you know what to do. Uh, another thing that might be showing up at this time is your intuitive leanings. This is a potent moment for you to listen to what bubbles up from the depths of your psyche and to pay attention to and then act on those intuitions. But first, you really need to begin to understand yourself. Two is a very intuitive, very psychic energy. And so that's going to be heightened for all of us this year. Or should I say all of us at this moment in time or this month? So in terms of your personal year considerations, if you're in a personal year one, if you're in a personal year three, if you're in a personal year five, if you're in a personal year seven or eight, this could be a somewhat challenging month for you, right? The tendencies of all of these are to do what you want and be for yourself and go at it more alone. Whereas this number is asking you for connection, right? To do it with people. If you're in a personal year two, four, six or nine, you'll probably sail through December, right? Providing you're honest with yourself about the relationships that you keep. If you don't know what personal year number you are in, there's a link for a video in the description that will show you how to calculate your personal year. This is a video and there's also a video for each personal year energy that you can experience. 
If that's not enough for you, there is also a tarot reading for your life path number for the rest of this year. And the new ones are literally just about to come out. So stay tuned. Key dates for December, the 10th, 20th and 30th are of any month are always closely to be considered, especially the 20th. The 2nd, the 11th particularly pay attention to because these are heightened and on the 20th as well potentially things get a little bit rocky all right so just things to consider now before we get into the tarot aspect i would invite you to take a moment to take a breath to breathe with me i would like to bless my deck of cards with all forms of love light peace prosperity and abundance and i pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise they help us all on our paths to our highest vibrational good. Okay, so I'll pop those to the side. For the Life Path One people, the holiday season is going to be fun, it's going to be connective, and it's going to show you where the love in your life truly is, all right? It's going to have a lot to do with chosen family, making new acquaintances might show up for you at this time, and look for the beauty and the love that is all around you. Don't be afraid to do a little mingling at this time either. Your message from the tarot is the three of pentacles. The spirit of collaboration is really what this holiday season is all about. Do not spend it alone. Find ways and time to connect with lots of different people. And also, this might be a time of profound learning for you. Maybe not necessarily just in like the book or the classroom sense, but a time for you to really understand uh, or learn about yourself in some regard. For the Life Path 2 people, be strategic in your holiday plans this year. Make sure that you have your lists. Make sure that you stick to them right? There's no point in writing a list if you don't stick to it. This might be a really good time to ask yourself what you want from a whole new year, right? And what you're prepared to do about it or even give up in order to go for it. And for this, you have the two of wands. I love this for you, right? I love this for you because this is your energy. The two of wands is a powerful card. It's a really active energy as well. And while it can be about making a decision about the path that you're going to take, it usually shows up to say to you, if you're willing to step outside of your comfort zone and rub different shoulders, you can absolutely find success. The world really has, you really have the potential to make the world your oyster. And it starts this month. For the life path three, party and more party, right? This doesn't have to mean wild, although for some of you it can be. It could be a great time for sales and commercial activities, and I really like this for you guys, especially for dancing, right? Getting out there and shaking that tushy, baby. You've got this with the Ace of Swords, and so the message really shows up this week, uh, this week, this month, if you're prepared to make some kind of decisive, not even, well, to take a decisive action, but if you're prepared to really make a decision and back that, that decision, this month can go a really long way towards finding the kind of success that you want and setting you up really nicely for the new year. Um, this month for you, if you're a Life Path 3, I think is it's really about focusing on what you do or don't want more of. For the Life Path 4 people, you will tend more towards home, hearth, family sort of stuff over the course of this month. You might be surprised at the nesting instinct that sort of shows up at this time. And if it does, lean into it, right? You might at this time decide that you want to give uh, the place a good winter clean or a spring clean if you're down in the southern. Uh, lean into it. Don't be surprised as well if people uh, call on you to assist them. If family members choose to lean on you in some way, shape or form that much more. For this, you've got the eight of cups. In a lot of ways, this is going to see you being really honest with yourself about what you are and are not responsible for and what you feel like you are responsible for, or should I say, what you feel like you should or should not be responsible for. I think this is a moment of real honesty to say, you know what, this is where I can make a difference, this is where I can't, and that has nothing to do with me. For the Life Path 5 people, you might not want the big sort of gathering that you're used to around this time. 
And that's okay, right? You might want something that's a bit more quieter, a you know, a chance to unwind or to chill, relax, maybe even set in for, you know, the holiday season, uh, settle in, should I say, especially because that's your, you're taking stock of the year that you've had, right? This is probably going to be that much more of a reflective month for you guys, but life itself in general right now is taking you more down that sort of, let's consider what's taken place up until now. For this, you have the four of wands. So you are celebrating, but the celebrations that you have are a little bit more subdued. They're a bit more focused on foundation and connection, maybe even some kind of celebration at this time that you want to observe that much more quietly. For the Life Path 6 people, you might just like at this time, you might be a little bit more distracted. Usually you're like the host with the most, right? And you are you might be sort of distracted with ideas, with plans, especially things around business or finances. You might just be a bit more focused elsewhere. Um, this is where you are. It's like be present in your body, right? Mind is firmly fixed on how to improve your lot in life, right? Your tangibles. But I will say, just remember to check in with your physical self where, you, where you're at. Got this with the tower card, right? Pay attention to your nervous system over the course of this month. If it says rest, then get your rest. If it says, you know, recuperate, then recuperate. If it says do something wild, maybe second guess that, <laughs> all right? Or get a second opinion. Um, the fact that it is the tower, there might be something that really shows up for you this month that surprises you and gets you to kind of say, okay, maybe I'm seeing this in a way that is somewhat skewed. A second opinion or a second set of eyes and ears may really help this month. For the Life Path 7 people, a holiday season where you get serious about your New Year's resolutions, what they are, what they are not, no matter like who doubts you or who says like, oh, well, didn't you see that last year? Fuck them, right? It's not about that. This year, you will be really serious about closing the year down and releasing what you need to in order to really excel in the year ahead. I actually really like this for you because it's like the way that you're shutting this year down, I feel like you come into 20 and because your natural energy is that much sort of slower and more deliberate anyway, which is going to be a real necessity in the first four months of 2025. I feel like you guys actually have the capacity more than anybody else to truly make 2025 your year, all right? Uh, for this, you've got the King of Swords, slow and steady, mind-focused and switched on, using your, using your smarts, using your expertise, using your knowledge, using your wisdom. This is really what's going to win the day for you. And the fact that you have the King of Swords means that there is potentially some kind of support. Your ideas, your information and your intelligence are really your sword and shield over the course of this month. As a Life Path 8, you are ready to start over. And I think the Life Path 8 people will probably be the most virtuous over the course of the holidays. Not restrictive, but like virtuous, right? There'll be a focus on the future, uh, what comes next, just like the Life Path 6 people. But I think you'll be somewhat more distracted than them because you're tending towards plans and goals that are elsewhere. Because you're looking more to the future, you might find that it's hard to kind of keep your feet on the ground. For this, you've got the Queen of Pentacles. The consideration here is your self-care. Self-care, self-love, looking after yourself, making sure that you're getting your rest, your water, your sunlight, all of those things, your exercise. The other thing with the Queen of Pentacles is you guys, not only are you focused on the future, but you're really focused on how you grow or expand what you already have present, right? There's a, a, a real need to kind of make the most of what you already have. For the Life Path 9 people, is going to be a spiritual, creative and social time for you over the holidays. This might be an ideal time because there's a lot going on. And in all of the I like all of the hubbub and all the rest of it, it's like maybe a lot of you are traveling at the holidays or maybe entertaining foreign guests or maybe people that you didn't expect to have around the holidays. And it's kind of like, OK, well, you know what, whatever, the more the merrier. 
you've got the Ten of Cups. So, yeah, I will second that. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a lot of people around at this time, maybe some that you really didn't expect to have. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you end up entertaining at times over the course of the month where you're like, I, you know, <laughs> you have to throw food together and, you know, run out to the shops and get extra because there's people coming over and you guys are connecting in ways that you just didn't expect and they're coming fast. Um, if you're inviting people over, it's also possible that those people bring a person and before you know it, you're like, okay, my house is rampacked. How did this happen? But being a life path nine, you guys are going to love it and thrive on it anyway. For the life path 11 people, into the master numbers, uh, for the life path 11 people, this is a time of release and letting go. And I hope uh, not just on a physical sense, but something comes to an end at this time. Um, and you must let it go, right? If you're a life path 11, there's something potentially, and I touch wood, I hope I'm wrong, maybe someone that comes to an end at this time. Uh, it's also a time to get rid of something, like whatever you don't, like whatever doesn't serve you, yes, but that could even be things, right? You might take a look around the house and be like, holy crap, there's so much stuff here that just no longer really speaks to who I am or what I'm about, uh, many of you might decide at this time that uh, a move is in order, a change of scenery is needed, or maybe to, you know, for you to regroup internally. For this, you've got the Queen of Wands. For a lot of the Life Path 11 people, this might be a, a, a holiday season where you're actually sticking to your boundaries. And it's not that you're getting into fights or arguments, but it's like around the holidays always, right? Everybody's emotions run high because the energy in the air is frenetic. But I think this might be you maybe quietly and confidently sort of setting a boundary and putting someone in their place to kind of say, that's not cool and I'm not having it, right? Another way that this could show up is maybe you make more time for creative endeavors and pursuits. And it's also possible that maybe you find an ally this month that you really didn't expect to have. For the Life Path 22 people, this is a special case for you because it's your, effectively, it's your ruler in essence, right? You might have a really strong maternal or paternal energy running through you at this time. It could be a personal time of growth. And it's like you're asking, like, what you want to be uh, to be a parent sort of may come in, right? So if you want to be a parent, maybe this month sees you really considering that in a powerful way. If you know that that's not your destiny or what you want, you might be thinking about what you want to birth into the world in some regard and what you're ready to really be nurturing over. It's also a time of higher responsibility of things and people that are not necessarily yours. Um, and this energy really asks you to be unselfish at this time. Now, for this, you've got the Nine of Swords. What this says to me more than anything else is there might be somebody in your life or in your midst that you're actually quite worried about or for. Um, it's also possible that you're looking around and sort of seeing things in the family like, OK, I need to do something about this. I need to show up for my loved ones or in a way that really kind of puts me in the lead right but you it's not like you you want to be in the lead just for the sake of it it's like I can see this is potentially going to be a problem let me put let me be the firm hand on the tiller now before it becomes a problem later on and then finally for the life path 33 people last but by no means ever least Big plans, bigger dreams, and the desire to enhance your financial lot might really come shockingly through to the forefront this month. You might find yourself like, huh, you know what, I never usually have that kind of drive, but December, you might really feel it in a way where you're like, okay, right, I'm going to make something happen. And it's possible that your personal power could really be at a peak this month. That being said, this might come about through a challenge or maybe being thrust into some kind of leadership role that maybe you either feel unequipped for, and yet it's yours to deal with, right? So it's like the universe says, look, you, 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 what you're feeling internally is the answer to a call that's about to come, and you're getting this intuitively. You've got the Seven of Cups as your card, and I think the reason for this is 
this month of December and over the holidays, you're getting really honest with yourself about what is or is not for you, about what does or does not resonate. And more importantly, you're really being very honest about what you need to take off of the off your plate in order to express your power. The reason I say this is because when we do too much or we divert our power in and our focus in lots of different ways, we dilute that power. Whereas if we keep our focus small, like I like to use just three goals at any given time, because it's it's enough to be diverse, to keep you engaged, but it's not so much that you dilute your power so much. Whereas if you've got like seven and eight things spinning, you usually end up dropping one or not doing it as well. So if you're a life path 33, it's time to command that power. Now, that concludes the monthly numerology insights, short and sweet. And I want to say whatever it is that you do or don't celebrate, uh, for those of you in the US, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful time of it uh, when it comes to December and the holidays there, whether it is Hanukkah, a happy Hanukkah to you. I truly hope you have a blessed time. If you celebrate Kwanzaa, I truly hope you have a wonderful and genuinely blessed time. If you celebrate Christmas, I truly hope you have a wonderful and blessed time. And if you celebrate uh, the winter solstice, I truly hope you have a wonderful and a blessed time. Whatever you do or do not celebrate, whoever you are with, I truly hope that your hearts are uh, light and happy and your bellies are full and that your life is merry. Have a fantastic time of it. Have a wonderful December. Keep me posted in the comments how it goes. Um, if you want to know what all of this means for you, how it speaks directly to your life path and uh, what your personal months are, and if you want to build a strategy, especially at this time, I've got something very special coming for January of 2025. Again, it will be very limited spaces because it's going to be pretty awesome. And also because I want to make sure that I can really serve in the best way. Stay tuned. Uh, have a great month. Go out there. Be who you're destined to be. Lots of love. You know Rafi loves you. Take care and I'll see you soon.